this guy has momentum, this guy really has momentum. But what does that actually mean? And why do linebackers bulk up to play American football? Welcome to Flip Physics. Today I'm going to talk about momentum. Check out this video. So we've obviously got that bit of momentum now going into the series and hopefully we can carry on playing really positively. And I would say Thompson and Wiener at the moment have the momentum. Which team do you think the Bills or the Fish have the uh, momentum going into this game? Were the commentators using it correctly from a physics perspective? Before you continue watching, click here to discuss what you think the term means. So big guys apparently have a lot of momentum, and people moving really fast also have a lot of momentum. And if you're progressing through something particularly quickly, people say that you figuratively have the momentum. So it seems like it's got something to do with size and speed. That's actually pretty close. The equation for the momentum of an object in physics is this, mv. That's the mass of the object multiplied by its velocity. And you might notice that that means we measure momentum in kilograms meters per second. Mass, kilograms, multiplied by velocity, meters per second. Kilograms, meters per second. And I'm afraid there's no special unit for this one. There's no newtons like there is for force. You just have to remember kilograms, meters per second. Sorry. I don't make the rules of physics, I just teach them. And the algebraic letter that we use for momentum is a lowercase p. That might seem weird, but it stands for the Latin for impetus. The Latin for impetus started with a P. And that's because in Newton's time, they thought of objects in terms of its impetus rather than its momentum. And now I'm afraid we're just stuck with it. So faster objects do have more momentum. And more massive objects, that's not size, that's mass. Massive. Massive. Get it? More massive objects also have more momentum. And momentum in physics is always conserved. That means you don't lose it. Conservation of momentum says momentum is neither created or destroyed. It can only move from one place to another. That's why when I drop one ball in a Newton's cradle, one ball comes out. And when I release two balls, two balls come out. And when I release three balls, three balls come out. And it even works with four. Whatever momentum I put in, the same momentum has to come out. So since all these balls have the same mass, two go in, two have to come out. Suppose you could send two in at one speed and one could go out double the speed. But that doesn't happen for another reason. That's conservation of energy. So when this stripe hits this spot, whatever momentum the first ball had, that momentum is transferred into the second ball. No momentum is lost. So the Earth gains some momentum. But the general message is momentum is not lost. It has to go somewhere. There's a lot of kind of fine print and exceptions like that in physics. Just make sure you ask lots of questions and it will all work out. So here's an example of a momentum calculation you might be asked to do. Two billiard balls weigh 0.5 kilograms each. The first ball is going at 2 meters per second, and the second ball is going at 3 meters per second. The second ball catches up with the first ball and hits it. After the collision, the second ball is moving at just 1 meter per second. What is the velocity of the first ball after the collision? So here, we can use conservation of momentum to figure out the answer. The total momentum before the collision has got to be equal to the total momentum after the collision. We know that momentum is mv, so we can just add up all the momentum before the collision and make it equal to all the momentum after the collision. We have m1 v1, the mass of ball 1 multiplied by the velocity of ball 1, plus m2 v2, the mass of ball 2 multiplied by the velocity of ball 2. Now we have most of these numbers. We're given the velocities of both balls before the collision, we're given the mass of both balls, and we're given the velocity of the second ball after the collision. So we know everything except the one thing we're trying to find, which is the velocity of the first ball after the collision. We can do some algebra, plug some numbers in, and solve. If you prefer to plug numbers in first, that's fine. I prefer to do the algebra first. So the first thing we do is take this m2 v2 away from both sides. Then we'll divide both sides by the mass of ball 1. That makes the velocity of ball 1 the subject of the equation. Plug our numbers into the equation, type it in the calculator, and this is what we get. You can also get situations where instead of bouncing away from each other, the balls stick together. Like this, for example. Because of the need to conserve momentum, you'll notice that their velocity is much smaller after the collision. First we had something with a smaller mass moving at a fast velocity. When it hit the other object, it was like it became one bigger object. Now that the moving object has a larger mass, in order to conserve momentum, it's got to also have a smaller velocity. That's why it moves slower after the collision. If we were writing an equation for this collision, it would look like this. When two things stick together in a collision, we can treat them as one object. 
So we're going to add the masses together. So we now have one object with a mass of one kilogram instead of two objects with masses of 0.5 kilograms each. And again, you could plug some numbers in and solve in exactly the same way, depending on what information you were given. To finish, click here to see a video of Richard Garriott on the International Space Station talking about and demonstrating momentum. I think momentum is actually easier to see when you're in space much less friction to worry about. So, when a linebacker is drinking his protein shakes to prepare for the football season, now you know why. The more mass he has, the more momentum he has. And because of conservation of momentum, when he goes barreling into another player, he transfers all of that momentum into them. And to be honest with you, I'm pretty glad that person isn't me. Thanks for watching Flip Physics. If you like this video, you can press the like button, you can also subscribe, but most of all, make sure you leave a comment below with any questions, thoughts, and suggestions. I'll endeavor to answer any questions that I can. Till next time, keep questioning. Well, when I'm sad, I stop being sad and do physics instead. True story. What, you're telling me that wouldn't work for you?